Sup, you beautiful bastards. Hope you've had a fantastic Monday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show, and let's just jump into it. And the first thing we're gonna talk about today is this devastating, important, and moving story out of Oregon. So this is a story that originally happened back in May, but surveillance footage from this incident was released going into the weekend. And so what we see in this footage is the incident on May 17th at Park Rose High School. And in it, we see Coach Keenan Lowe, who just disarmed an 18-year-old student, moving away from that student and holding the shotgun out of his reach in the hallway. Lowe appears to be talking to the student keeping him at a distance with one hand until a nearby teacher grabs the gun from Lowe and moves away with it. And once the gun is out of the picture, Lowe wraps his arms around the student who begins to cry. And at times, it looks like the student's trying to break free from this hug, but we see Lowe continuing his hold and the teen just gives in. And obviously, I mean, you, you just look at this footage, uh, you understand that Coach Keenan Lowe, a bamf, a hero stopping what just would have been a horrible tragedy, which on that note, the county district attorney's office there said that the student had been suicidal for months leading up to this incident. And both prosecutors and defense attorneys agree that the evidence suggested that this was not a potential mass shooting case. Instead, the student's attorney explained to the judge that the teen planned to take his own life at the school so that his mother wouldn't have to discover his body. With authorities also saying that the gun was loaded with one round, which notably was marked with the words, the last red pill, 51719, just for me. Also, according to reports, another student who noticed the teen's troubled state of mind reported him to the administration for suicidal statements. And so actually Lowe was on his way to bring the teenager into the school's office when the incident happened. The district attorney said that the student was visibly upset as he headed for the classroom where Lowe had just arrived. The student then pulled out the firearm from beneath his coat, prompting students and staff to flee. And at that point, the district attorney said that he turned the gun on himself. He tried to fire, but the weapon did not discharge. And that's when Lowe took action. So I saw the look in his face, look in his eyes, looked at the gun. I realized it was a real gun. And then my instincts just took over. Um, you know, I, I lunged for the gun put two hands on the gun. I felt compassion for him. Um, you know, and a lot of times, especially when you're young, um, you don't realize what you're doing until until it's over. He broke down and, and I just wanted to let him know that I was there for him. Um, I, I told him I, I was there to, to save him. I was there for a reason. Um, and that, you know, there, this there, this is a life worth living. Now, as far as what happened to the student, because like I said, you know, this happened back in May, he pleaded guilty to one count of unlawful possession of a firearm in a public building and one count of unlawful possession of a loaded firearm in public on October 10th. And with that, he was ordered to serve 36 months of probation. And as part of a plea deal with prosecutors, he will also receive mental health and substance abuse treatment. And for me personally, especially as, as you get more and more detail in this story, it, it's hard not to get emotional. You know, we look at the situation and, and you have these two individuals who reportedly never met each other before. You have one one person seemingly filled with all this pain, not planning to see tomorrow, and then just happenstance, another individual that apparently was prepared and willing to take in that pain. I just reading part of the breakdown of this on uh, Sports Illustrated, they did, a, they did a piece on Keenan Lowe. They write, sitting there on the ground, the menace fading from his face, the teenager looked scared, confused, troubled. He kept repeating the same thing, that he didn't want to hurt anyone, that he only planned to shoot himself. Nobody cares about me, he screamed. Lowe looked into his eyes, I care about you, he said. You do? Lowe is saying that that broke his heart. I do, bro, Lowe said. That's why I'm here. I got you, buddy. And it really made me wonder, how, how many of those conversations, right? I feel alone, no one cares, I care. How many of those happen too late or never at all? Maybe that's the kind of question that we need to keep in our heads whenever we're given the opportunity to just have an unprompted positive interaction with another individual. Right, a way to take this sad and almost horribly tragic story and turn it into a positive. Unfortunately, I feel like that's a lot of what we do on this show, trying to make uh, lemonade. But yeah, a positive thought and wow, there's no way to transition to the next story. Then, uh, briefly, we had Miley Cyrus in the news today. This, because a number of people, it seems like specifically in the LGBTQ community, are angry at her. This, because while she was on Instagram Live with Cody Simpson, she said this. There are good men out there, guys. Don't give up. You don't have to be gay. There are good people with dicks out there. You just gotta find them. You gotta find a dick that's not a dick, you know what I mean? <laughs> you don't have to be gay. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I always thought I had to be gay because I just thought, like, all guys were evil, but it's not true. There are good people out there that just happen to have dicks. Cody I've only ever met one, but... I've only ever met one? <laughs> and I'm just live. And that last part is also why you had people saying, oh cool, she's villainizing men. But for the most part, a lot of the backlash were people feeling like she was misrepresenting and minimizing the gay experience. With people like Rosie Percy tweeting, Miley, this is so not it. Women don't quote, have to be gay because they quote, can't find a good person with a dick. Don't use the queer community as a stopgap because you couldn't find a boyfriend. People aren't queer because they gave up on men. This is so insulting. Right, and a big part of the backlash were people saying that this just fuels the myth that being gay is a choice. So on the other side of this, you did have some defending Miley Cyrus, pointing out that Miley Cyrus 
Cyrus herself came out as pansexual a few years ago, saying that she's helped normalize. People also pointing to Miley's nonprofit that helps homeless queer youth. Some dismissing what she said is just kind of a dumb joke. And actually, just before finishing up today's show, Miley Cyrus released a post saying, I was talking shit about sucky guys, but let me be clear, you don't choose your sexuality. You are born as you are. And I mean, that's essentially the story. And with this, uh, of course, I'd love to know your thoughts. Also specifically, if you're a member of the LGBTQ community and you feel comfortable sharing that, I'd especially love to know your thoughts on this since you're more heavily affected, right? Because even if this is in passing, it's now part of the public conversation on the topic. But from that, I wanna share some stuff I love today and today in awesome, brought to you by ridge.com slash DeFranco. And the Ridge, if you don't know, is the fantastic minimal front pocket wallet that's designed to let you ditch your bulky wallet. The Ridge wallet is slim, RFID blocking, lifetime guaranteed, and it is honestly the last wallet you'll ever need to buy. It comes in titanium, carbon fiber, aluminum, and polycarbonate, and on top of all of that, there are tons of different styles and colors to choose from, and currently they're featuring the forged carbon fiber Ridge wallet, and it is easy to see why. And as I always mentioned, it's awesome sleek design is what I love most. It has those two metal plates bound together by a durable elastic band, so it's easy to get in what you want and pull out what you want. And if all of that wasn't enough, they even have stylish phone cases. I personally picked up the brown leather one, durable charging cables, power banks, knives, even weatherproof backpacks, duffel bags, and travel kits. With over 30,000 five-star reviews and free returns, Ridge has got you covered when it comes to upgrading your gear. And so, if you're ready to make the smart move, just head on over to ridge.com slash DeFranco and make sure you use code DeFranco to get 10% off with free worldwide shipping today. And the first bit of awesome is, is actually Charlemagne the God put out a really interesting video with Gucci Mane. It was really, really interesting. Then we got the Silicon Valley season six trailer. We got the brand new trailer for the Vin Diesel movie Bloodshot, the season three trailer of The Crown. Then if you like last night's premiere of Watchmen, you should definitely check out Watchmen in the weeks ahead. We had Bon Appetit giving us every way to cook salmon. Jablinski Games gave us Tenacious D versus Foo Fighters. And if you want to see the full versions of everything I just shared, the secret link of the day, really anything at all, links is always are in the description down below. And then let's talk about news that, that kind of combines two of my favorite pastimes, uh, calling out Chinese authoritarian bullshit and uh, really finding any excuse to put PewDiePie in the thumbnail. And the reason these two things came together is that over the weekend, PewDiePie announced, Well, boys, we did it. I'm banned from China. That's right. <laughs> After I spoke about the Hong Kong protest and showed their leader being mocked as uh, looking like Winnie the Pooh, I got banned from China. As far as what he's talking about, last week he posted a meme review, and in it, along with sharing memes around protests, censorship, things like South Park being banned, and of course, Chinese President Xi, just so grumpy when he has no honey, he also criticized companies like Blizzard. And along with all of this, uh, Felix shared an interesting tidbit on Twitter writing, China took copyright of PewDiePie in 2017 without me being able to stop them anyway. Guess they can't sell any more PewDiePie wedding dresses now. And highlighting the goods allegedly involved, reading clothing, gloves, wedding dresses, Etc. You know, following this, there was a massive reaction online. A lot of people kind of celebrating it, with people saying things like, it's an honor to be blocked by China. Congratulations, bro, you made it. You also had people disliking that it happened to Felix, but also happy that since it happened to the largest YouTuber on the planet that it raised awareness to the situation. I personally believe and agree with the mindset behind both of those comments. I feel like the Chinese government blocking or banning or just trying to limit your reach in any way is a badge of honor. You know, right, the Chinese government's acceptance appears to come with more eyeballs, with more dollar signs, but it appears to be an exchange for freedom of speech, for going along with something that's truly horrible. Yeah, let me know what you think on this one. And then let's talk about this just massive story out of Chile. And so if you haven't seen, there have just been these massive protests there that have been going on in some form for about a week now. The protests starting on Monday when hundreds of students swarmed several subway stations in the capital Santiago to hop turnstiles in protest of a transit fare hike. And while the protests started over the fare hike, which went into place on October 6th and followed other hikes earlier this year, they quickly became about broader economic issues in the country. Because while Chile has become one of the wealthiest countries in South America, America, it has also become one of the most unequal economically. For poor and middle-class families, the cost of living has been rising while wages have remained the same. You have protesters also blaming rising costs in part on widespread privatization policies, healthcare, education, and many utilities have seen rising costs. Meanwhile, low wages have caused pension payouts to remain low because of poor contributions. High prices for gas and electricity have also caused transportation costs to rise, which is massively significant because one of the highest costs for that demographic is transportation. And in fact, according to the New York Times, for a person making an average monthly salary there, about a fifth of that is spent on transportation costs. Meanwhile, Chile's president, Piñera, has an estimated net worth of $2.8 billion, according to Forbes. And so as Rodrigo Booth, a professor at the University of Chile, described the current situation, this was an economic pressure cooker that's been building for decades and it exploded. This had little to do with public transit. It became a situation about brutal inequality. And calling these protests an explosion is, is really not an exaggeration. By Friday, the protest had escalated with students damaging turnstiles, smashing glass, and vandalizing stations. Videos also showing individuals 
throwing large objects like sheet metal onto subway tracks, and it was also reported that they set fires and barricades at metro station entrances. And so we saw subway services canceled entirely all across Santiago. The, the protests began to shift to the streets with demonstrators setting fires and looting stores. You had riot police reportedly responding by using tear gas and hitting protesters with batons, while armored military vehicles used water cannons to push demonstrators back. You had Pinera addressing the violence late on Saturday by imposing a curfew and a state of emergency in Santiago, placing the military in charge of security in the city, which is just a massive deal because it also marks the first time that this has been done for nearly 30 years since the end of the Pinochet dictatorship in 1990. Right, and during that nearly 17 year long regime, the military patrolled the streets and committed mass human rights abuses, arresting, kidnapping, torturing, and murdering dissidents and others, many of whom were disappeared by the government. Right, and so Pinera's declaration prompted many to draw comparisons to what the military did under Pinochet. But even with Pinera's announcement, the demonstration still continued on Saturday with protests spreading to several other cities across the country. And then what we see on Saturday night is Pinera actually announces that he will suspend the fare increase, saying in a televised statement, I have listened with humility and with great attention to the voice of my compatriots. But that ended up not doing anything to stop the protesters who continued on Sunday. And while some protests remained peaceful with demonstrators banging on pots and pans and waving pictures of people who had been disappeared during the dictatorship, you also had others engaged in more violent tactics, setting fires and looting stores, with the authorities responding by firing tear gas, water cannons, and rubber bullets at protesters. Shops and offices were also forced to close and flights were canceled or delayed at Santiago International Airport. According to reports, as of Sunday night, 11 people had been killed in the violence, with a report saying three were killed on Saturday while eight people were killed in fires on Sunday. Also, many more civilians and police have been injured. The government has said that 1,500 people have been arrested, which is significant because Pinera has said that he will invoke the state security law to prosecute people involved in the attacks on the subways. And that law carries prison sentences of three to five years. Then on Sunday night, the state of emergency was extended to five other cities and Pinera said that he would extend it to more on Monday. Also, while speaking during a televised address, Pinera said, we are at war against a powerful enemy who is willing to use violence without any limits. And those words really angered many Chileans for two reasons. First off, you'll notice a trend here. It echoes a similar declaration made by Pinochet. And secondly, you have people saying labeling protesters as criminals shows that he doesn't actually care about their concerns, which go way beyond the fair height. But ultimately, as of recording this video, that is where we are. You know, with Santiago still in a state of emergency, a lot of the city still remains shut down with schools closed. You know, reportedly today, Chilean authorities attempted to clear the wreckage and reopen public transportation. Meanwhile, you also have protesters calling for a general strike to take place today. Yeah, it's gonna be really interesting to see where this goes because it's always hard to tell. You know, you see some sort of spark that starts a massive fire and at times the government then addresses the thing that sparked things, but then you have this fire that's far greater than how it started. We'll have to wait and see. And of course, I love everyone's opinion on any of the topics we talk about, but especially today for those that are in the country, around the country, have family there. I mean, in part, uh, I'm covering this story today because a lot of you messaged me. What are your thoughts about what's happening? What do you think will happen? What do you think should happen? I'd love to hear from you in those comments down below. And that's where I'm going to end today's show. And hey, remember, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you're new here, subscribe. Definitely tap that bell to turn on notifications so you do not miss these daily videos. Also, if you're not 100% filled in, you're looking for more to watch and listen to, I have that brand new podcast with Mia Khalifa, or maybe you just missed the last Philip DeFranco show you want to catch up. You can click or tap right there to watch either of those. But with that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces, and I'll see you tomorrow.